So in a prior screencast, we talked about deriving an equation that would give us the temperature profile as a function of x for an extended surface. And what we looked at was conduction down the axis of the extended surface, and then we looked at the fact that uh, convective heat transfer occurred in an, an orthogonal direction away from the extended surface into the surroundings. And by performing an energy balance on a differential slice of our extended surface, we arrived at this second order ODE, and we looked at the solution to that ODE. And by performing an energy balance on a differential slice of our extended surface, we arrived at a second order ODE. The solution to this equation has this form, where we have two constants, C1 and C2, that we need to solve for. And the way go, we go about solving for them is by applying a couple of boundary conditions. Moreover, in addition, we defined what was called a thin parameter, this variable m, and we just used that to minimize the amount of writing. One thing to think about in terms of units, the dimensions, you could show the dimensions for this thin parameter m is equal to 1 over meters. And that's important because each of the exponentials, we need to have a unitless quantity when we exponentiate something. So let's focus on this equation and see how we can come up with a meaningful temperature profile subject to two particular boundary conditions. And for this problem, the two boundary conditions I want to use is that the temperature is a known temperature, we'll call it T base, Tb, and this occurs at x equals zero, so right at the base of the extended surface. The second boundary condition I want to use is I want to assume that the tip of our extended surface is adiabatic, so it's completely insulated, there's no uh, opportunity for heat to escape out the very end of that rod. So what we would say is in that case the flux in the x direction is equal to zero at x equals L. And as a consequence of that, by Fourier's law, we're going to find that the temperature gradient dt dx is also equal to zero at x equals L. So these are our two boundary conditions. We specify the temperature at x equals zero, and we specify the temperature gradient at x equals L. It may be easier to work with the second boundary condition to begin with, but to do so, we first need to figure out the derivative of the temperature with respect to x. So when we differentiate our temperature profile with respect to x, we're left with this expression. The m's uh, come down and the t infinity falls out because it's a constant. We're left with that expression. So let's apply the second boundary condition to this equation. And we've got dt dx is equal to 0 at x equals l. So here I replace x with l in both of the exponentials and set that equal to 0. A little bit of algebra allows us to solve for C1 as a function of C2, dividing out by the uh, by m, bringing this right-hand term over to the left, and we could find that uh, C1 is equal to C2 uh, multiplied by the ratio of e to the negative nl divided by e to the negative ml. Simplifying, it's C2 times e to the negative 2ml. So now let's apply our first boundary condition to the temperature profile in which t is equal to tb at a value of x equals l. And when x equals l, both of the exponential terms go to 1 and we're left with, in this case, our expression t becomes tb is equal to c1 plus c2 plus the ambient temperature t infinity. So now we're going to plug our expression for c1 into this equation. We're going to result with the uh, following equation, and then we're going to rearrange and solve for C2, which is a temperature difference divided by 1 plus e to the negative 2ml. So after th cleaning things up a little bit, I'm going to substitute the expression for C2 into our expression for C1. And we've now got two expressions for the constant of integration. We've got C1 is equal to this expression, and C2 is equal to that expression. Where we're going to go from here is to plug in C1 into, this, the, into the temperature profile, and C2 also into the temperature profile. And in doing so, this is our final temperature distribution for a fin in which we've specified the temperature at x equals 0, and we specified the flux at x equals L, and we said that that flux was 0 because we're assuming that the tip of this extended surface is insulated or adiabatic. And here I've taken a moment to tidy up the expression a little bit. You'll often see in textbooks that this is a, a ratio of two hyperbolic cosines. I, I just think it's a little easier to interpret this way. I think it's, uh, 
I think it's just easier to work with. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's a couple of things we ought to think about, though. I'll show you an example in which I graph this expression as a function of x. But I think it's important to graph, let's just uh, take a stab at it for a moment. Uh, graphing the temperature as a function of x, we've got x equals L on the right-hand side, x equals 0 on the left-hand side. We do know that the temperature is the temperature of the base, some hot temperature. And what we also know by way of the second boundary condition is that dt dx is equal to 0 at x equals L. We don't know what the value is. It could be that temperature. It might be some hotter temperature. But we do definitely know that the slope is going to be 0 at x equals L. And just for reference, I'm also going to use a dashed horizontal line to represent T infinity. And we could actually take a stab at graphing this, or at least gain some insight as to what this graph would look like. I mean, we could just plug this into uh, some program in your calculator and get a curve, but I think, it's, uh, I think it's enlightening to look at the differential equation itself. So this uh, left-hand side of the governing differential equation gives us the concavity. And if the temperature of the rod is higher, hotter than the temperature of the ambient temperature, m squared is some positive quantity, that says that the concavity of our curve is going to be upward. So I expect a, a concave upward graph with a condition, a boundary condition on the left-hand side that is at a known temperature. It's all concave up. And eventually, we're going to come in with a slope of 0 at x equals L. Now note you might look at this and you might say well that looks like a parabola to me but remember a parabola has a second derivative that's a constant but in our case the second derivative becomes smaller at higher values of x simply because t is becoming closer and closer it's cooling down becoming closer to t infinity so the concavity begins to go to 0. As you, if you could imagine, if, uh, if we made the rod a considerable amount longer, the, the temperature will eventually asymptotically approach T infinity. And at that point, it looks, uh, it looks essentially linear because the concavity goes to zero. All right, well, let's use this expression to come up. Well, I, here, I just uh, graphed an example using this expression. And I, I chose parameters, a uh, heat transfer coefficient of 50 watts per square meter per Kelvin. That's like a, a gentle breeze over uh, a, a fin with a diameter of 2 millimeters. I chose the thermal conductivity of copper. And then uh, the combination of these parameters results in a fin parameter of 16 1 over meters. It also represents a BO number that is very small. If you're not familiar with a BO number yet, don't worry about it. All that allows us to do is confirm that the temperature does not depend on any variable other than x. So if we looked at the cross section of it, you know, the cross section of this rod, it tells us that the temperature here is basically the same as the temperature here. So the temperature along any part of a cross section at any variable x is going to be essentially uniform because the BO number is very small. The boundary conditions that I've specified is that the temperature of the base is 100 degrees C. I've also specified an ambient temperature T infinity of 20 degrees C. And we, what we observe is that the, uh, the boundary condition, the second boundary condition, is satisfied because the slope comes in at 0, where I've chosen a fin length of 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters. Now, and it also predicts, there's a, a, one other thing to point out, it predicts a decreasing temperature. The concavity is upward like what we, what we would have expected. But the temperature difference between the tip of the fin and the ambient temperature is about 20 degrees C. So this fin hasn't yet cooled down to ambient temperature. But if you examine the form of this, if we made the length quite a bit longer, you could expect that the temperature of the fin will eventually, it will asymptotically decay to T infinity or the ambient temperature.